Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Alabama head coach Nick Saban has tested positive for COVID-19. The school announcing the news just minutes ago. Uh, Nick Saban turned 69 years old this month. Also, his athletic director, Greg Byrne, tested positive for COVID-19 as well. Saban left the football facility immediately as Alabama is getting ready to host number three Georgia on Saturday night. And here's a statement from the head coach himself, Nick Saban, saying, quote, I found out earlier this afternoon that I had tested positive for COVID-19. I immediately left work, isolated at home at this time, do not have any symptoms relative to COVID, and I've taken another PCR test to confirm my diagnosis. I informed our team of my positive test at 2 p.m. today on a Zoom call. Let them know offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian will oversee preparations at the complex while I work from home. All right, some big news here. Let's break it down with CBS Sports HQ college football analyst Barton Simmons and Chip Patterson, two members of the Cover 3 podcast. Uh, Chip, I'll come to you first here. Um, we already saw the Florida LSU game postponed, the Missouri Vanderbilt game postponed. Now we have Nick Saban uh, testing positive for COVID-19. What's your reaction to this news? I'm going to wait and see what Alabama is going to do because I imagine that this is going to lead to within the contact tracing protocols a lot of testing for other members of that Alabama program. And so if this is an isolated incident with the athletic director and head coach Nick Saban and it does not impact the rosters, then I imagine that the game against Georgia, the one that we have been uh, so uh, looking forward to even before the schedule got reset. Remember, it was a September game. Now it's in October with the new 10 game SEC schedule. We knew that Georgia and Alabama were going to play each other in the regular season, and we knew that was going to be one of the games of the year, not just in the SEC, but in all of college football. So I'm, I'm going to be paying attention to what everything that Alabama says, and I imagine that they, as they go through that contact tracing, uh, we are going to get the opportunity to see uh, how those numbers are going to look. If they take the field with Steve Sarkeesian, you know, we, we know that he is now uh, leading the operations from inside the complex. I assume that means that he will be in the active head coaching duty then I think that Alabama should still be able to maintain that high level that is set with Nick Saban. But there is an intangible here because Nick Saban is the greatest coach in college football history and not to have him around that program and not to have him on that sideline, that is a definite hit for Alabama. But first and foremost, we hope Nick Saban remains asymptomatic. We hope that there are no complications from his COVID-19 diagnosis. He is, of course, uh, older, and that is something that you go to first. So we wish a full and healthy recovery for Nick Saban, but I'm paying close attention to Alabama to see what's going to happen in terms of contact tracing and whether or not this impacts the game on Saturday. Yeah, obviously the personal side is, is where you go first. Uh, you just hope that Nick Saban uh, recovers fully, it continues to be asymptomatic, as Chip said. I, I think on the football side of things, it, this is really fascinating to me because, look, t two reasons why you would imagine that Alabama will be as a program okay on this is because this is such a disciplined, uh, rules-oriented program that, that Nick Saban has run at such a high level. And so because of that, uh, I, I think that th these, these protocols that have been put in place all around the country and within every building in, in these college football programs in America is, is to prevent getting sick, certainly, but also to prevent further contact tracing uh, uh, casualties, so to speak, in terms of guys that are going to have to miss. And so Alabama is a program that certainly has run at a really high level from a discipline standpoint year in, year out. So I would imagine that they have, have been following protocols to the degree where this won't get too many other people. But who knows? I mean, this is obviously something we're going to have to wait and see on. But secondly, in terms of just the on-field product, I think that we've seen year in, year out in, in bowl season. Sometimes the, the really well-coached teams, when a coach leaves, those teams are just as effective without them because they are so well-coached, because they are so trained and disciplined. And so I think in that regard, you know, that there, there's no reason to think Alabama isn't still prepared for their game against Georgia, particularly when you consider Steve Sarkeesian, plenty of experience as a head coach, but Kyle Flood. Plenty of experience as a head coach. Uh, uh, they've got Charlie Strong as an analyst. They've got Butch Jones as an analyst. There's plenty of of, of faces and, and and minds in that building with plenty of, of ability uh, to step in in some capacity and fill some sort of role collectively uh, that that Saban misses out on. But uh, again, th this is just a pretty unprecedented and it kind of feels the college football world shake 
because Nick Saban is a character of such magnitude in this space. And so uh, this is going to be a little different than any COVID uh, positive test that we've seen to this point. And Barton, you said it right there, the magnitude to this space, what he means to the game of college football, six-time national champion, uh, the best college football coach all time, arguably. You can argue uh, different guys, of course. I know the names out there. But Nick Saban is one of the biggest and best head coaches of all time in this game. Chip, how do you expect the SEC to respond and react to to this news I think they're going to offer Alabama all the support that Alabama wants but you know it there are protocols in place in terms of what it's going to take to have a game uh, rescheduled or postponed and so I don't want to guess until we know what the contact tracing, tracing protocols are going to produce at Alabama what this might mean for the game again I, I do think that if Alabama if this is limited to just the athletic director and head coach Nick Saban and we get uh, good news on the testing front as the, we continue to work towards Saturday's game I, I think that they would still want to play this game against Georgia but for the SEC I think that they are going to rely on Alabama and have Alabama tell them uh, what the testing results what the contact tracing protocols have resulted in in terms of player availability in terms of coach availability uh, while Nick Saban is and I'll say it Hakeem the greatest head coach in college football history uh, I do think that like Barton mentioned that there is enough in place within that Alabama team such that they can proceed in the same way that Florida State proceeded when Mike Norvell tested positive and had to work remotely via Zoom, I think that Nick Saban will still be very active in terms of the preparation process remotely from his home. But I, I don't think that this one diagnosis, just this one piece of news, is enough for me to think that we're going to postpone this game. But certainly, again, I, I am paying close attention to what Alabama says in terms of the next steps, the next hours, the next days, because if this is something that is a little bit more widespread in terms of avail availability, then we do start to call into question whether or not this game can be played on Saturday night. Barton, you mentioned the discipline and how well-disciplined this Alabama team is. If you're going to be an Alabama football team, the program, it's going to be a disciplined program. You know that no matter who's running and calling the shots on game day. But you played big-time college football, Division One football. These are 18, 19, 20-year-old something kids here how are they going to react to not having their head coach on the sideline for a monster game come Saturday night it's going to be really fascinating because it's hard to really know um, sort of what sort of presence Alabama's coaching staff can have without Nick Saban at the head I mean he is such a figurehead at that program in, in such a commanding way unlike really anywhere else in the country uh, and, and so I would imagine that that there's going to be an element of um, I don't want to say win one for the Gipper, but but I mean, a, a, a collective focus, a collective refocus on that roster and, and knowing that, that Nick Saban is not there and knowing that your head coach is not there, um, sort of in the same philosophy of, of kind of playing hurt, playing sick. Sometimes you can put together your best game because you know you have to refocus and really dial in. And so I think Alabama will be challenged in that regard. I'm sure that that staff and Nick Saban himself are going to sort of put that challenge in front of them. Um, I, I think I'm also interested because, look, there, there were plenty, as I mentioned, there were plenty of options to be that sort of inter temporary head coach, acting head coach in that game. It looks as though Alabama is moving forward with Steve Sarkeesian in that role, but that's also the play caller. Uh, he's the offensive play caller. And so when you add that duty on his plate, uh, in addition to offensive play calling, you have to wonder if perhaps that could have an impact. Um, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if maybe Charles Huff, the associate head coach, had stepped in. Maybe Kyle Flood, again, a former head coach himself. Uh, there's a couple head coaches in the analyst pool. Um, so uh, it's, it's interesting to me that Steve Sarkeesian was, was, was who they called upon. Certainly not surprising. Uh, but but I, I do wonder if that might have sort of more of an impact, perhaps, than just the lack of, of Nick Saban. But again, this is so unprecedented, it, it's really hard to wrap your head around just sort of how this could impact the game. Chip, when you look at Steve Sarkeesian taking over here and you know that he can put up points with an offense, I mean, shoot, we saw them put up 63 points last week uh, against Ole Miss, but we also saw him give up 48 points as well. Uh, so the defense certainly needs to make adjust some adjustments facing a Georgia team. A Georgia team that doesn't put up a ton of points, but still, uh, that's a big uh, point of emphasis. When you look at what Steve Sarkeesian can do and can run this offense and now is calling the shots and being looked to as the leader in charge, what is that? how does that impact this team going into Saturday night 
It's a lot of pressure. Um, and I do think that the most impact is going to be on the coaching staff. It's going to be on everybody who signed up to work for Nick Saban with the idea that you are going to better yourself as a coach, with the idea that when you leave your post, you are going to go somewhere else with the opportunity to take a step up in the same way that so many of these Nick Saban assistants have, as whether it's a Kirby Smart, whether it's a Jeremy Pruitt, uh, whether it's all the way back to a Jimbo Fisher. You know, everybody, if you are on an Alabama staff, if you are working for Nick Saban, period, then you think that you're going to be able to go out there and accomplish more after your time in Tuscaloosa. So this is a lot of pressure on Steve Sarkeesian. It is arguably uh, one of the greatest challenges that he has faced since he arrived and since he really joined this group. So I, I think that for him, he is very lucky that he's got two things. Number one, an experienced quarterback who has absolutely stepped up in every way that's been asked of him in Mac Jones. Tua goes down, he steps in, he is very prolific, he runs the offense well. He comes in this season just throwing absolute dimes, running the offense at a higher clip, I mean a historically higher clip than any other Alabama quarterback in program history. And number two, Najee Harris. I, I really think Najee Harris is a, a Heisman Trophy contender at the running back position. He, he's a senior who could be in the NFL right now, and we just saw his first career fumble ever as a college player. He's reliable, he's steady, and I think that Najee Harris is gonna be what this offense can lean on, what Steve Sarkeesian can lean on, because you're going up against a Georgia offense that does not present the same threats in terms of tempo and does not present the same threats in terms of how potent it is compared to that Ole Miss offense. You can win running the ball. You can win against Georgia with Najee Harris as your superstar. So for Steve Sarkeesian, I think that those are two things that are great going in his favor from a play calling and a game planning perspective, but he needs to lean on all that experience and that whole group of coaches needs to come together. I'm really not that worried about the players without Nick Saban, but the assistant coaches that now have to step up, I think that that's probably where this game hinges. Najee Harris, certainly a model of consistency, uh, even going back to last season and now into this season, uh, continued success there for the Tide. Uh, Barton, when you take a look at this big picture in the landscape, we saw Missouri Vanderbilt postpone, uh, Florida LSU postpone, now the news here with Nick Saban. And we know that schools and programs and the universities are doing their best to socially distance while having fans in the stands and they're and they're trying to be models uh, model citizens here in, in this situation we all hate this we all do not like what is going on right now in this pandemic but we also we we want football and we love to watch football but what's the threshold here when is it when we say we need to step back and say let's take a pause here we have two games already being postponed and now a head coach um, a guy of the magnitude of Nick Saban uh, testing positive for COVID. I get it. I mean, th there's a different weight to this. It, it feels different, obviously. But the reality is, look, this is what the SEC and all of college football, frankly, signed up for when they said, we're going to go anyways. We're going to power through and we're going to play ball. We, we knew this would happen. I mean, coaches have been preparing for these circumstances. They've been making contingency plans. They've been laying out uh, the, sort of an order of operations in terms of uh, of a succession plan and play callers and, and, and what happens with when a sideline assistant is out. What happens when your training staff is out? What happens when your equipment guy is out? They, they, they've been preparing for this possibility because they knew it was real. And here it is. And now that it's hit, I, I, even though it is Nick Saban, I, I don't think that we should act as if suddenly that, you know, the things aren't what we expected. I, I think the reality is this is this is the season, and, and I think if anything, perhaps this is a wake-up call to some of the SEC programs in particular. Things have been plugging along pretty nicely here, and, and now I, I think you know maybe you see things tighten up a little bit on road trips. Um, maybe you see some of those protocols adhered to a little bit more closely by some players and coaching staff. I mean, Dan Mullen a week ago what was asking for a full stadium in the Swamp. And, and, and just I think today, yesterday, he kind of walked back that back and apologized given – all that's happened this week with Florida COVID positive testing. So I, I think that this just um, sort of makes it real for a lot of programs, particularly in the SEC. But this is what we accepted. This is what they signed up for, we signed up for in, in, in moving forward with this season. And so I, I think that things just have to continue to proceed as they are um, and, and, and continue to adapt 
and, and make the necessary adjustments to protocols to make sure things are as safe as possible. All right, well, the plan is in place for Nick Saban to oversee the preparations from home as Alabama gets set to play Georgia on Saturday night in the SEC on CBS Game of the Week. Barton Simmons, Chip Patterson, join us here on CBS Sports HQ. Men, thank you. And much more from them on the Cover 3 podcast. Of course, they'll have instant reaction to this news, and they'll set you up for the big week in college football, including their lock segment. The Cover 3 podcast, download and subscribe today. Still ahead here on CBS Sports HQ, continued coverage of the breaking news. Nick Saban has tested positive for COVID-19. More reaction on the way. Keep it locked. You're watching CBS Sports HQ. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.